Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Twilight Princess. We're here outside of Telma's bar because this is where we need to go to be advancing the story, finally. <laughs> We've done a whole lot of collection lately, but now we can finally get to the meat of the game. So basically, we're going to have sort of a set of dungeons coming up here because we've got a new collectible to get. And, uh, you've made it. How you been? Mercy, but you have good timing. I was just talking about you. Well, hey. <laughs> you must have been talking about me for the last week or something, because, you know, I could have come in there at any point in time and you would have said the same thing, but oh well. So basically, we're going to be meeting these group of people here. These are those friends I mentioned, the ones who are trying to help deal with all the troubles in Hyrule. Actually, there's one more of us. There's a disturbing turn of events in the Western Desert, so he's gone to check it out. The desert, huh? Named Aru. I wonder if that's uh, that, that's really close to the name of the like the Light Sage in Ocarina of Time, isn't it? It may actually be the same name. I don't remember off the top of my head, but it, it's something close to that. Now, I think the, the sage was Raru, wasn't he? Oh, well. Anyway, this is Shad. I imagine this guy to have a British accent. I don't know why, but I just do. Uh, there's something he says. Well, I'm formidable at book reading, but I lack, like, shall we say, physical skills. Uh, some, uh, something about cup of tea and I'm your fellow makes me think he has a British accent. I don't know. Just, <laughs> just my personal thinking, I guess. So at the moment, he's absolutely entranced by the Oka. Yes, according to legend, Hyrule was made by the Highlands, who, as we all know, the closest race to the gods. But also, according to legend, long ago, there was a race even closer, and they say these creatures made the Highlands. Yeah, okay, you're, I think you're a little into your books there, buddy. Because <laughs> we've, you know, we've come across one of those, and I, I really don't think that, uh, <laughs> that Oku created me, but, oh well, whatever. It's a Shay. Okay, well, <laughs> skip the introductions, I guess. Listens in common courtesy, we're not part of the regiment, so forgive me if I come off as rude, yeah? So basically, uh, each of these people sitting around here have, like, sort of a dungeon attached to them. Like, Shad was talking about the, the sky beings, and, uh, she here is talking about the mountains and all that stuff, and this guy doesn't really say much. He looks kind of familiar, though. Let's talk to him again and see if we can get anything out of him. It has been a long time. Link? Oh, it's Russell! Awesome. So, it's, it's pretty cool that he's actually, like, a member of this sort of group of fellows back here. Like the others, I'm gathering information, I will let you know if I hear anything. And now, pretty much when you talk to him from here on out, that's the line he says. I'm gathering information now. So, that's kind of cool, but, uh, Telma here mentioned something about the Western Desert. There's, uh, what's her name, Louise. Almost forgot. So we need to be heading to uh, the western edge of the world, pretty much. It doesn't actually tell you how to get to the western desert. I guess it kind of leaves you to figure that out on your own. Uh, she did mention Aru was out here, though. But uh, the closest thing we have to west, like this is the furthest west warp point we have, so let's go to Lake Hylia. It's kind of annoying that you have to turn into a wolf. I don't know why you have to turn into a wolf to warp. You know, it doesn't make any sense, really. So we're back in Lake Hylia yet again, and it's still peaceful here, which is awesome. So where we want to be going, uh, there was actually a Po next to the area where we uh, where we need to be going right now. Uh, you may remember one of the first Poes that I collected here around the Lake Hylia area was by... Uh, it actually, it might have been the first Po. was by this big stone tower sort of thing uh, that's over there in the distance. So let's just climb up there real quick. <laughs> I would like to do it real quick, but I'm limited by how quick fa or how quick Link can go. <laughs> I was thinking of how quick and how fast, how, how quick fast can go. It's like, wait, what? Uh, that's not right. <laughs> you'll you'll have to excuse me for being a little out of it this morning again, because this is another one of those instances where I basically just woke up not too long ago, and I'm already recording here, so. Anyway, let's climb up this insanely long ladder. At least he climbs ladders a little bit faster than he climbs vines. I thought it was about time for you to arrive. Master Link, is it? You do know Telma, don't you? I am Oru. I am part of the group that Telma kindly allows to meet at her bar. For a lot of your deeds from her, and now you're being a courageous youth of likelihood of strange events of the desert. Or am I mistaken? Actually, I haven't heard crap about the desert. You do know, don't you, Master Link? 
The Gerudo Desert once held a prison built to hold the worst criminals this land has ever known. Hmm, this sounds familiar somehow. This is a little different, though. The criminals who are sentenced to death were sent directly to the underworld by a cursed mirror that was kept in the prison. Now the prison is condemned, and even the road leading to the desert is impassable. The desert is at world's end. It still holds the cursed mirror and the malice of the doomed inmates. These old bones know that the evil currently plaguing Hyrule is related to this wicked place, so I've come to learn the truth. Master Link, I must ask, what will you do now? Don't tell me you plan to enter the desert and confirm my suspicions. Yes, I do. Let good old Aru help you out, then. Yeah, so this guy knows fear, Fier, which is kind of funny. And he gives us this memo, which for some reason is on like four sheets of paper. Like, geez, how long of a memo did you write, man? Okay, so see, long ago I saved this man Fier's life, and now he cannot refuse me if I ask a favor. So basically, after he's been extorting us this entire game, we get to extort him this time and have him shoot us over to the Gerudo Desert. So let's make our way back over to the Cannon Travel Center place sort of thing. Uh, I, may, I may just swim the rest of this. Because <laughs> it's kind of a long way to go around. But you swim ridiculously slow, so... I don't know. Who knows what's faster, right? I don't think you can climb up here. I don't know, you might be able to. It might be too high, though. Yeah, it's too high. That's what I thought. So let's make our way around. I think we can climb up this side. There we are. Alright, there's this bird again. If you talk to him as a human, he says, Plum has no need to speak to humans. You know, because he's a jerk like that. Anyway, Fier's over here. As usual, let's get this four-page memo out. Here you go. I, I brought an essay for you to read. Hmm, from old Aru, huh? Ah, well, I guess I ought to do what the old coot says. Wow, you read that quick. Alright, so, this time's all paid for. We're gonna get a secret cannon travel option not available to the general public. Yeah, next time you gotta pay. Well, too bad there won't be a next time, buddy. I can beat your system. So, this scene is basically the same, but the only reason I'm leaving it in is because we're firing to a different place this time. And the cannon does actually point in a different direction. See, it's kind of spinning around here. And you may also notice, uh, in a few brief shots, there's... I think you'll get a good one of it here. Uh, maybe not. Well, there's that tower that had, like, the five things sticking out of it that we've noticed a few times now as we've, uh... As we've, like, went with the Golden Wolf and everything. We've seen those a few times. But this is the Gerudo Desert. And man, does it look intimidating. It looks huge. Wait, Link. What, Minna? Before we go on, there's something I want you to hear. So we're basically, we're going to get a lot of backstory here about Minda and her race of people. What do you think happened to the magic wielders who tried to rule the sacred realm? They were banished. They were chased across the sacred lands of Hyrule and driven into another realm by the goddesses. It was another world entirely, the antithesis of Hyrule, where the sun shines bright. Its denizens became shadows that could ming could not mingle with the light. Eventually, most came to call it the Twilight Realm, and from it, none could return to the world of light. They were forever doomed to live in the twilight, flitting in the half-light of dusk, mere shadows of Hyrule. Gotta say, I love Midna's word choice. This is the history of the twilight as it has been passed down from our ancestors. Do you now understand what I am? I'm a descendant of the tribe that was banished to the Twilight Realm. Whoa, you look you look kind of pissed there, Minna. It was a peaceful place until Zant took control of the Twilight Realm and transformed all the Twilight into Shadow Beasts. Yeah, I, I always thought this place looked kind of futurific. You know? F futurific? Oh! <laughs> futuristic, rather. <laughs> wow. Anyway, it's clear to me now that he somehow gained a great evil power previously unknown to our tribe. In any case, I was sent from there and could no longer get into the Twilight Realm without his power. Futurific. 
That should, that should be like some sort of cereal commercial or something. It sounds like some cheesy line that would be thought of by a cereal commercial to me. Though the goddesses forbade us to return the world of light, they left one link between the light and the darkness. Something called the Mirror of Twilight was passed to the protectors of Hyrule. It's our only path to the Twilight Realm, and we must get there. Oh, you'll come with me, won't you? Aw, oh, Minna, you're so sweet. Yeah, I'll go with you. So that's basically our new goal. Instead of collecting pieces of Fused Shadow, we're now trying to find this Mirror of Twilight that'll take us into the Twilight Realm so we can do battle with Zant. And this is the Karuto Desert. I mean, holy crap, look at this. I think this actually looks pretty intimidating. There's something way off in the distance, some silver thing sticking out. There's something flying around up there in a helicopter style. And there's those, uh, there's those little things sticking out of towers that I was talking about earlier. And down there, actually, you can kind of come to the look over here, and there's Fier's shop and Lake Hylia and all that stuff. You can even still see the warp point up there, which is pretty crazy. Anyway, we're out of time for this episode, so in the next part, we'll cross the Gerudo Desert in search of the Mirror of Twilight. Till then, thanks for watching. See you next time.